The Chinese wheelbarrow, which is driven by human labor, beasts of burden, and even wind power, was of a much different design than its European counterpart. In this video, we're going to talk about the Chinese variant and delve into its history, the uniqueness and advantages of its design, its use, and how it differed from the European model. To start, let's look at the basic principles of a wheelbarrow that most people in the West are familiar with. Here we have a replica of the model of wheelbarrow used in ancient Greek days nearly 2,000 years ago. By having the wheel in front, it allowed for the replacement of a two-person stretcher for moving items and materials from one place to another. The front wheel replaces the second person and also provides leverage for the lifting of heavy weights. However, the burden of lifting, propulsion, balancing, and steering lies solely with the operator. Even with the energy required to use this device, it has proved to be an efficient tool to people who have needed to move objects or material over distances too heavy to be carried by hand. Delving into the variant that is the subject of this video, we'll begin by looking at the fundamental difference in design because that is the critical factor that made this tool not only more efficient than the European variant, but also what made it so successful and utilized for hundreds, if not thousands of years. Currently, there is much speculation and open information on the exact date of the invention of the Chinese wheelbarrow. Archaeologists have found art containing wheelbarrows dating back as far as 118 CE, though stories, fables, and historical records allude to people and objects being carried as much as 200 years before that in the first century BCE. The oldest written reference to the Chinese variant goes back approximately 1800 years and has been credited to two separate individuals. Chuk Lang and Zhu Liang. Chuk Lang was a Chinese general in the first century CE. He mentions in some of his writings of a cart that could be used to transport large quantities of military supplies and be beneficial when traversing narrow embankments. The design he mentions had a single wheel, approximately one and one quarter meters in diameter, with roughly a dozen spokes that were positioned in the middle of the cart so that the center of gravity from the load would be directly over the wheel. There has been speculation that this was an adaptation of the two-wheeled cart commonly used at the time. Zhu Liang was a prime minister of Shu Han, one of the major states in power during the time of the Three Kingdoms period. It was written that in 231 CE, Zhu Liang developed the vehicle of the wooden ox and used it as a transport in a military campaign. In addition to these accounts, there are numerous mentions of paintings and tombs from around 0 CE that give reference to its use. It should be noted that there is also a circulating folktale that gives credit for invention to a farmer from the 1st century CE named Ko Yu. Whether one story has credence over another or they all overlap, the one thing that is not in doubt is the effectiveness and popularity of the design. It should be noted that two-wheeled handcarts were a familiar tool used throughout the East and West as far back as 1,000 years before the single-wheeled variant. These handcarts were the predecessors of the wheelbarrows that we are familiar with today. By placing the wheels in the middle of a cart, the wheels supported the load and only required the operator to expend energy on balancing and propulsion. The one-wheel device that Lang mentions retain this design factor and by using only one wheel it could now be used to transverse narrow trails. This leads us now into discussing the physics behind wheelbarrows. When carrying goods, whether by a person or by a pack animal, the load is not only moved in the desired direction but it also undergoes an up and down movement with every step. This additional movement wastes energy, especially when transporting heavy goods over long distances. Dragging the items does not have this up-down drawback, but you do have additional friction resistance to contend with. Pulling a wheeled vehicle, therefore, would be the most efficient use because when the cargo only undergoes a horizontal motion and ground friction is largely overcome by the wheels, wheeled carts and wagons, whether powered by animals or by people, can move more weight for the same energy input, but this advantage comes at a price. You need to build a fairly smooth and level road, and you need to build a vehicle. If the vehicle is drawn by an animal, the animal will need to be fed. Comparing a two-wheeled cart or a four-wheeled wagon, the two-wheeled cart was much cheaper to build because wheel construction was a labor-intensive job. Although the two- and four-wheeled carts required a road, the wheelbarrow, with its lone wheel, could suffice with a narrow path and one that was also bumpy. 
The two handles gave an intimacy of control that made the wheelbarrow very maneuverable, and building a one-wheel design also took advantage of the construction time and cost savings for just a lone wheel. In comparison to the Western design, the Chinese design incorporated a much larger wheel which is placed in the middle of the wheelbarrow to shoulder the full weight of cargo that only requires the human operator to guide and balance the vehicle. One way we can look at this is to compare weight load. On a Western design, when the load is 100 kilograms, the operator carries a load of 50 kilograms while the front wheel supports the other 50. With the Chinese design, the wheelbarrow supports the full load. It was estimated that by placing a large wheel in the middle of the vehicle, one could easily carry three to six times as much weight than if using a smaller wheel in the front. This made for an extremely powerful and agile vehicle. In 1176 AD, the Chinese writer Sang Min Sing noted enthusiastically, quote, The device is so efficient that it can take the place of three men. Moreover, it is safe and steady when passing along dangerous places. Ways which are as winding as the bowels of a sheep will not defeat it." End quote. This design eventually became so popular and widely used that it earned the nicknames of the wooden ox and the gliding horse. These terms referred to the two basic variants that came into use. The wooden ox, Mu Ni U, which had the shafts projecting in front so that it was pulled, and the gliding horse, Lu Ma, which has the shafts projecting behind it so that it was pushed. A combination of both types was also used, being pulled and pushed by two men. From these two basic designs, many variations evolved. As with regular carts, animals were also employed in propulsion. One example of this practice can be seen in the 1126 painting by Cheng Zhe Tuan, which is described by author Joseph Needham. Quote, the painting depicts the popular life of the capital Kaifang at the time of the Spring Festival. Many wheelbarrows are moving or stationary in the streets of the city. All but one have the large central wheel and some are very heavily laden. During the loading and unloading, the wheelbarrows rest on side legs. One is being pushed by a single man, and in all cases, the porter steadies the vehicle by the shafts behind, while traction is affected either by one man in shafts and one mule or donkey with collar, harness, and traces, or by two animals side by side, similarly attached." End quote. The use of auxiliary power from animals and wind, the two were sometimes combined, made it possible to design larger wheelbarrows that could take more cargo. The latter configuration is shown again in the picture in the Thien Kung Kai Wu, 1637 CE, where within the text we read, quote, The northern one-wheeled barrow, Tu Yuan Chi, is pushed by one man from behind with one or more donkeys pulling it from the front. It is hired by those who dislike riding on horseback. The travelers sit on opposite sides to balance it, and a mat roof shields them from sun and wind. When not carrying passengers, these barrels would take as much as four or five tan of goods, around 300 kilograms. The one-wheeled barrel, Tulun Tui Chi, of the south, is also pushed by one man, but without animal aid, and carries only two tan, about 130 to 150 kilograms. When it meets potholes in the road, it has to stop. In any case, it seldom goes more than 100 li, 50 kilometers. End quote. Over time, human innovation approached the question, how can we do more and move more using the same thing? And the answer to this was as simple as a cloth sail. Attached to an upright pole, it provided an extra force of energy to ease forward movement, decrease operator fatigue, which in turn increased both the distance that could be traveled between rest periods and the overall weight of goods moved. The date of the introduction of the sailing wheelbarrow is unknown. But Joseph Needham notes that the contraption, the Qian Fan Qi, was still widely used in China at the time of his writing in 1965, notably in Honan and in the coastal provinces such as Shantung. Rudolf Hamel and F. H. King also spotted and described the vehicles. While some sails were very simple pieces of cloth, others were perfect miniatures of the ones used on a junk, a Chinese sailboat, easily adjustable by the driver. With the arrival of the Industrial Revolution, a third variant arrived in the late 19th century known as the peep car. On the island of Billington, on the coast of Sumatra, a Dutch tin mining company was faced with very bad roads. The solution turned out to be a combination of Eastern and Western knowledge. Wheelbarrows, equipped with narrow wheels, they were guided by iron rails. 
The concept of rails for guidance is not unique to the peep car alone. It was also used on horse-drawn rail cars that became popular in western cities around the same time. Although industrialization has minimized the widespread use of manual labor, the concept of the single-wheeled cart for transportation is still utilized, though more often than not is for recreational activities. Regardless, the simplicity of construction, the ease of use, and the utilization of innovative variants that have powered armies and economies throughout time has given the Chinese wheelbarrow a very quiet and special place in history.